grab your Bibles, y'all. Let's, let's jump in this word. Let's see what God has for us today. Praising worship team. Man, thank you guys. Amazing, amazing job. As always, leading us into the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Norman, and just the entire team, man. Thank all of you guys, all of you ushers and greeters and parking team, all of you um, doing an amazing, amazing job just helping us to get, to get to this place. So we thank God for you so much. Go to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Because you stood so long, I will not ask you to stand again, but Luke chapter 10. There's a word that I believe that God has given to me to share with you guys. And I need your prayers because I'm really in a worship mode, so I've got to transition to preach mode. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Luke chapter 10. Hallelujah. I, I just need to say this. Yesterday, I had a chance to, to go to um, Pastor McLean and Christian and Miss Shonda. They kind of put on this, um, what is it called? The Business Expo. And I got to say, man, I was so blessed to see all the businesses, all the, all the businesses and all the people who have their own business. And listen, I, I, I just, I want to I wanna speak the blessing. I want to speak the blessing over your business. Whatever your business is, whatever you're doing, I say today that your business is blessed in Jesus' name. I speak the blessing over your business, whatever that is. And for those of you who look to start businesses, I say that God's going to give you wise ideas. That God's going to give you the direction, the steps to do it. Some of you have been holding off, and God is pressing you forward. Amen. I, I say this, it, as God leads, step out in faith. I don't know who that's for, yes, sir. but as God leads, step out in faith and trust the Lord. Amen. Amen. I just want to share that was in my heart um, to share that just now. So I want to share that with you. Amen. Luke chapter 10, verse number 17. We're going to read 17 through 19. That We'll just read 17 through 19. Luke chapter 10. Verses 17 through 19, the new King James, excuse me, the King James, I'm reading from the King James this morning, the King James version reads like this, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. And he said to them, Jesus, and Jesus said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Verse number 19, I really like this one. Oh, this is a good place to shout. Behold, I give you power. Some of your Bibles may say authority, authority, but I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And he didn't stop there. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, everybody shout nothing. Nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Father, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Look at three people and just scream at them and tell them, use your power. Just scream at them and tell them. Look at something. That's one. Dude, you got two more. Use. Use. <laughs> Use. Use. Use your power. Use your power. I could really go home right now. I could do the benediction right there. Now we could just go home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Use. That's enough right there. Yes, sir. Use your power. Yes, sir. Ooh, that thing will preach already. Yes, sir. Use. Yes, sir. Already preaching. Use. Yes, sir. <laughs> Use. Yes, sir. Your power. One of the things that we don't focus on enough or we probably should focus on a little more in Christendom is spiritual authority uh, because spiritual authority is something that uh, that Satan tries to fight 
us in knowing who we really are. Spiritual authority comes from God, where God, uh, God uh, gives us a portion of his authority through his word. One, one of my favorite shows to watch, and you, you guys have heard me say this, one of my favorite shows to watch is the Andy Griffith Show. <laughs> Call me old-fashioned, but, but some shows you can watch without being all sexually stimulated. Y'all might as well say amen to me. Some of this stuff, you shouldn't be watching some of this stuff. Some of that stuff ain't right. Hallelujah. I like Tyler Perry, but some of the stuff he be letting come through. Y'all might as well say amen. One of my favorite shows is the Andy Griffith show. One episode I was watching Andy Griffith. He, Andy had to go, uh, he had to go to Mount Pilot because he had some conference. And you laughing. You're like, you know Mount Pilot. <laughs> like, you know what Mount Pilot is. <laughs> Andy had to go to Mount Pilate, and Barney was following him around, saying, Andy, will you make me acting sheriff Why are you gone? <laughs> In other words, he was saying, will you give me authority to make decisions in your absence? Andy kind of blew him off a couple of times. He said, no, nah, Barney, you know, I don't know. And he said, what do you mean? You know, this is, this is reliable Barney Fife. <laughs> Andy kind of blew him off. He said, no, nah, man, you know, I don't know. You know, he says, and then Barney says to Andy, he says, you mean that you can't trust me to take care of the city for eight measly hours? Andy thought about it. He says, well, it is just eight hours. He says, okay, Barn, I'm going to swear you in as acting sheriff. So he swears Barney in as acting sheriff. And he says, Barney, and Barney tell him, I assure you that everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be taken care of. I've got it. This is good old reliable. I wish I had some Andy Griffith show watches in here. Know what I'm talking about. This is good old reliable Barney Fife. <laughs> and it goes to Mount Pilot. It has the conference and they go to commercial. And then when they come back from commercial, apparently a span of eight hours had happened. And so Andy is now coming back in. He gets out of the squad car and Barney is outside the police station and he's chilling. Andy walks up and Andy's looking around and the entire city was quiet. Everything was calm. Nothing was going on. Andy walked around, walked up and said, Barney, he said, man, everything's pretty quiet. He said, see, I told you I could do it. It was only, it was only eight hours. Andy looked at Barney and said, Barney, man, I'm proud of you. He said, I got to admit, when you first asked me, he said, I wasn't sure. He said, but now that I'm looking around the city, everything looks good. Barney, I'm proud of you. Andy grabs the door to the station, opens the door, and walks in, <laughs> looks at both jail cells. Some of y'all saw that episode. <laughs> Barney arrested the whole town. <laughs> Barney put the whole town in jail. <laughs> Andy walks in, his eyes are this big. He's looking, he says, Barney, what'd you do? And Barney, pull up his britches. He said, see, I told you, everything under control. <laughs> so then, as they was, Andy gets the key and goes over and says, Barney, man, what's, what's going on? He so, so he's trying to set up a trial, and as people was coming out, guess who 
was locked up with everybody else. Don't go A-B. <laughs> A-B. And open. Little open. Was also in jail. He locked up the whole city. What Barney did was what you and I should be doing. What Barney did was he took his authority and every time somebody broke the law, Barney threw him in jail. <laughs> because of the spirit, the authority that he had, he was acting on the sheriff's behalf. But God has given you and I an authority. That whenever we see a demon breaking the law, we have the authority. Watch this. Let me explain it to you. God said whatever you bind on earth, I bind it in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth. He said, he told Peter, he said, Peter, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Glory to God. The problem is we are watching Satan violate God's law all the time. We're just not operating in our authority to arrest the demons that are breaking the law. Jesus, Luke chapter 10, I thank God for Luke. He's a, he's a physician. He's a very prolific writer, and he's very detailed in his accounts of what happened in Jesus' life. Uh, he, he's, he, he, the, the Bible says that there were 70 disciples. Uh, the 12 uh, now become 70, and Jesus tells them, he says, I'm sending you out two by two. Jesus sent them into whatever city that he was to enter. He says, I need you to go into the city, and I'm going to give you some very specific instructions as you go into the city. I'm going to send you into the city, Luke chapter 10 says. And he says, before you go into the city, I need you to pray. First thing I want you to do is pray. And I need you to pray to the Lord of the harvest. That he will send laborers into the vineyard. So the 70 get together. They hear this thing. They say, okay, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to pray. We have to pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into the vineyard. And then he says, I'm sending you out as lambs amongst wolves. In other words, I'm going to give you your identity. I want you to know, watch this, that just because they act like wolves don't mean that you're supposed to act like them. Even though you're amongst wolves, you continue to be like lambs. Glory to God. I'm sending you out as lambs amongst wolves. Then he said, watch this. Carry neither money bag, don't carry a knapsack, nor sandals, greet no one along the road. But in other words, in other words, don't make provision for yourself. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to make sure that every one of your needs are met. He's talking to the seventy as he's sending them out. And he says, watch this. When you get to a house, in other words, in this particular time, um, it was dangerous to have a church service in a synagogue or in a church building. So because of the persecution that Christians were under in this particular, in this particular day. So Jesus tells the disciples, the 70, he says, I want you to go knock on doors. Knock on doors in every city that I send you into. When the person opens the door, I need you to say peace unto this house. Peace be unto this house. And what's this? He said, if the son of peace returns, then you may enter. In other words, in other words, when you say peace be unto this house, if the person that comes to the door is a person of peace, they'll let you in. If they have a spirit of peace or a spirit of hospitality, they will let you in. But if they don't, he said, don't you go in that house. Glory to God. Let me say this. Let me say this to some of you. You can't go into everybody's house. He said, he said, when you say peace, be unto you a peace unto this house. He said, when peace, if peace, if peace returns, he said, if you feel peace, I want you to go into that house and I want you to set up a prayer meeting. 
I want, you to, I want you to go into the house, disciple the people in this house, see if they can invite other people to come to the house. And I want you to, I want you to have these meetings, have these church services in the people's homes. And so the, the 70 went out and did it, went out and started doing that. And now, he didn't stop there, but also he told them, he told them, he said, he said, I need you to heal the sick. I need you to say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. Whatever city you enter, he said, they receive you good. If they don't receive you, he said, don't even take the dirt from the city with you. He said, they receive you, go in. He said, go in, preach. Let them know that the kingdom is at hand. But if you go in and they treat you with, with hostility, he said, just say, listen, the dirt of this city is on my feet. He said, take it off, knock the dust off, and said, may this be a warrant against you that the, uh, that, that the, uh, that the uh, judgment of God is now on this city. He said, just leave the city. And so the 70 goes out, and they do exactly what God tells them to do. He says to them, he says, listen, there's some cities that did not receive God, and they were destroyed. He gives them a list of the cities that, that were destroyed, Cherozim and, and Bethsaida, and Tyre and Sidon. He said, these people, we went to these cities, they did not receive you. And he said, it would be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment that comes for you. He tells them that. Now watch this. So they're out. Now the Bible doesn't tell us the timeline. We don't know how long they had been gone. Maybe it was weeks, maybe it was months, maybe it was years, I don't know. But there was, was a time that Luke records that the 70 returned. The 70 finally make it back, whether it was a week, whether it was a month, year, we don't know. But we know that it was a long time for them to go to every city and make it back at a certain time. Well, they come back, and when they come back, they come back rejoicing. Now, you would think that if a person had been gone that long, they would come back tired. you think they'd come back complaining. They didn't take any money. They didn't take the bedroll. They, could, they, didn't, they didn't have a knapsack or sleeping bag. They didn't take anything with them. You would think they'd been, they'd been complaining, but the Bible says they came back. And when they came back, they were rejoicing. The Bible says they came back with joy. And here's what they said. They looked at Jesus and said, yo, man, you're not going to believe it. I can imagine Jesus saying, try to, you know. Jesus, you're not going to believe this. They said, even, let me say it like this. We heal the sick. We did what you said. We preached the gospel of peace. People were delivered and set free. People came to a loving relationship with Jesus Christ, with you. And he said, but something else happened. They said, even the demons were subject to us. Even the demons was subject to us. Here's my first point. If you're taking notes, write this down. That deep, you have authority or you have power over demons. You got to know that. That you have power over demons. Say this with me. Say, I have power over demons. Now, you've got to know that. You have power over demons. They, just, they, they came back. They said, even the demons are subject to us in your name. You know, and I was thinking about this, and I was trying to figure out how to how the best way to illustrate this. Um, but there's there's been a couple of football teams in East Texas that that have gone undefeated. When you go undefeated, even though it was a really tough year, a really tough season, at the end of it, all you want to do is have a party. You just want to rejoice. I, I remember, I remember uh, when I when I was younger, back in my basketball days. <laughs> I got an old rusty layup now that work every now and then. But I remember going to the court. And I remember when we go to the court, you have a day that you got the right squad with you. You got the right team with you. Guys, you got great chemistry. You go to the court or you go to the park and you play, and you have one of those days where you go undefeated. Feels good when you go play ball and you're undefeated. Maybe some of you play volleyball, and you, may, you go, you play volleyball, and, and, and you have game after game after game after game, and when you go undefeated, all oh, that feels amazing. Even though you're tired, your feet hurt, your knees hurt, elbows hurt, but you feel good because you went undefeated. Watch this. The 70 were undefeated. They were undefeated. Can I say this to you? This is not even in my notes, but I want you to have this. You need to know that it is God's will for you to be undefeated in spiritual warfare. 
That's God's will. It's God's will that you go undefeated in spiritual warfare. That's God's will. It's God's will that you win every attack or every war against the enemy. That's the will of God for your life, that you go undefeated. The power, he said, watch this, that we have power over demons. He said, but the power, we found out what the power was. Watch this. The power is not in our name. Help me, Holy Ghost. He said, the power is in your name. <laughs> the demons are subject to us in your name. Hmm. Help me, Holy Ghost. So, why are demons afraid of that name? Why are demons afraid of the name Jesus? Why? Why? Did you find it strange? Did you find it strange that right after the disciples said to Jesus, demons are subject to us in your name. Do you find it strange that the very next thing that Jesus said was, I remember something. Do you find that strange? That he said, <laughs> I saw Satan fall. <laughs> Maybe y'all didn't find this. I found that so strange that when they said, Demons are subject to us in your name. He said, I saw. I saw, S-A-W, past tense, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Why are demons so afraid <laughs> of the name? Why are they afraid of the name? Jesus. I, I, think, I think Revelation 12 gives us the answer. I think Revelation 12 gives us the answer. Well, this is the message. You see it on the screen. Listen to this. Listen to this. Revelation chapter 12. We we're talking about using your power. Revelation 12, 7. And it, it, says, it says, a war broke out in heaven. I'm going somewhere. Y'all pray for me this morning. I'm going somewhere. A war broke out in heaven. Let me say, let, let me, can, can I just, can I give y'all the ELV version? That's the Eric Love version. Can I, can I give y'all that? Can I give y'all that version? I just like that version better. I like that version better. So, so here's what I'm, let, let that let that stay up. Um, here's what happened. So Satan, uh, his name was Lucifer. He was an angel. He was an archangel. There were three archangels in heaven. One, these are the highest ranking angels in heaven. You had Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. Glory to God. Lucifer got beside himself. Lucifer got the big head. Lucifer, watch this, he, he got too big for his britches. That's what my grandmom used to say here. So then Lucifer had all these people following him. Let me, let me, let me parenthetically digress, say this right here. Listen, be careful of following baby pastors that try to raise up in the congregation. Be careful of seeing somebody else's authority greater than your pastor's authority. So Satan rises up. He's rising up and, and he's created a group of people that now in his mind, now he has authority over this group. Satan convinces this group that he says, Satan says, okay, listen, listen, y'all rocking with me. I'm rocking with y'all, man. Let's do this thing. And so they were like, yo, we with you. We with you, Big L. <laughs> We with you, Big L, man. Listen, what, 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 what's good? What are we doing? And then Lucifer was like, say, man, listen, let me, I'm going to build me a throne. <laughs> I'm going to put all, these, I'm gonna put all these, these jewels and diamonds in my throne. You know what we're going to do? They was like, what's up, fool? And he's like, man, listen, we're going to walk up to God, bro. Here's what we're going to tell God. This is ELV version. Y'all pray for <laughs> Here's what we're going to tell God. We're going to walk up to God, and we're going to be like, yo, Big G. This is how disrespectful they were. Yo, man, listen, uh, we want you to 
You know what I'm saying? Because I got people. You know what I'm saying? You got people. I got people. You feel me? Let's kind of collab. You know what I'm saying? Let's work together in these streets. <laughs> these gold streets. You feel me? Transparent gold. It's enough for everybody. So, so he goes. They get the throne. Lucifer, man, got this. Y'all, y'all, y'all down? Y'all straight? Wait, wait, come up. Now, wake him. Come on, man. Yeah. He's like, let's go. <laughs> hey, God. Hey, man. Hey, we, we want to holler at you right quick. You got, you got a minute? <laughs> yeah. You, you got an eternity? <laughs> Say, uh, you know what I'm saying? We see you got your throne and everything, you know what I'm saying? Man, you've been doing good. Yeah, you made all this. We've been doing good. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? But my boys, you know what I'm saying? They want to they wanna rock with me. You know what I'm saying? So I tell you what. We want you to put my throne right beside your throne, and we're going to run all this together. This is a true story. This is in the Bible. I'm just giving you all my version. <laughs> We're going to rock out. We're going we gonna to do all this together, man. Listen, so we want your throne beside my throne beside your throne, man. You know what I'm saying? So, so what's good? You know, what's good, fam? You know what I'm saying? You know, either you, either you do this or, or I'm going to put in my resignation. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be no more music up around this joint. <laughs> read the Bible. It's fun. There's some good stories in there. You ought to read it. It's in there. So watch this. God looked at this dude. And God was like, are you serious? God was like, Mike, Mike, God, come here, Mike. You ain't going to believe this. Mike flies over. <laughs> he was an angel, y'all. It's in the Bible. It's in there. You got to read it. Maybe, maybe just say he flew over, but I'm, you know what I'm saying? This is my version. So Mike comes over and he says, Mike, look, man, this dude says that he wants me to sit his throne beside my throne. Mike was like, what? <laughs> Luke, man, what's wrong with you, boy? Man, put my throne over there, fool. Don't play with me. God was like, Mike, listen, Mike, deal with him. Because if I deal with him, see, I'm going to destroy him. If I deal with him, I'm going to destroy him. That's when we get to Revelation chapter 12. <laughs> where the Bible says, a war broke out. <laughs> because Mike jumped on Lucifer. And if I could use an African-American colloquialism, beat the brakes off of it. <laughs> beat him up. Beat him up so bad. Not only did he beat him up, but he beat all of his goons up. You, you know it's bad when you get beat up. And the people you brought to help you, they get beat up too. All y'all got beat up. Everybody running. Everybody got knots on their head. Everybody bleeding. People limping. People trying to cross. You got beat up so bad. They got, they got beat up so bad that the Bible says that there was not even any place in heaven for them anymore. Beat them up throughout all their furniture. Do everything out. Now, I don't know about you, but there was this girl at my school. She was a bully. <laughs> and she's bullying this one girl, and this girl kept telling her, leave me alone. And she bullying this girl, bullying this girl. I kept watching her bully this girl. But one day she bullied this girl, and this girl got tired. And they was in the hallway. And this girl said, I told you to leave me alone. And she takes off her belt. Now, that's a true story. She takes off her belt. With the buckle end hanging. <laughs> and 
and she hit that girl right in the face with that belt. Bow. <laughs> the girl's like, <laughs> it was kind of graphic. I don't tell you all the stuff that happened that day. But listen to this. After that, the bully became so afraid of this other girl that even at the mention even at the mention of the name of this girl caused the bully to turn around people start messing with the bully they would walk up beside and say here come that girl and she would just get so She got whooped so bad that it put fear in her heart at the mention. Oh, this is good. Y'all can, can say man. Y'all can clap. I know it's good. At the mention of his name. Well, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. It's on the screen. James chapter 2, verse 19. First time I'm Watch this. James chapter 2. Look, 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 look. You believe that God is one? You do well to believe that. Watch this. The demons also believe that and shudder and bristle in all feel terror. Why? Woo! Because they've seen his wrath. So every time you say, the name Jesus. Demons tremble at the name Jesus. Why? Because they remember their breaks. They remember that whooping. Come with the God. They remember that whooping they got in heaven. <laughs> so every time you say the name Jesus, demons. That's why. You can't be afraid <laughs> to use the name. Gee, that's why, that's why the 70 came back and they said, wait a minute. The demons are subject to us in your name. You know why? Because I saw him. <laughs> I was there when he got tore up. I was there when Michael gave him the business. Oh, I wish I had some street folks in here. I was there when Michael did it. And I saw him fall. Like lightning. So then how does that authority work? How does that authority work? Let me explain the authority and we'll be done. Uh... My authority as a pastor comes from God. God said, I shall give you pastors. And the pastors, he says, he says, pastors, I give you oversight. I give you authority over the flock. You are to shepherd the flock, to be overseers to them. That authority comes to me from God. It's not my own authority. I didn't ask for it. It's not my authority. But that authority gets transferred to me from God. It's God's authority that I operate in. Dee Dee is my assistant. So if I say to Dee Dee, hey, I want you to go and I want you to say this to this group. or I need you to, to get this group of people to do X, Y, Z. When Dee Dee comes to you and say, Pastor said. She's not operating in her authority. She's operating in an authority that she has assumed from me who's her authority. So, if you don't do what she said based upon what I gave her to say, you don't have to deal with her. You got to deal with me. Because I'm going to ask you, why didn't you do what she asked you to do? My job, Didi is to me what I am to God.
My job is to come to you to tell you what God said. If you don't listen to me, you ain't got to deal with me. You got to deal with the one who sent me. Demons tremble because watch this. If they don't obey you, this is so good. If demons don't obey you, they no longer have to deal with you. Now they got to deal with God. I'm closing. Because it is God who told you, go cast out demons. In other words, go do like Barney Fife. <laughs> go arrest every demon. You see, throw them all in the prison and stand out on the porch with a straw in your mouth. Pull your britches up to you over your belly button. They said, even the demons, and I'm done, even the demons are subject to us. And now here's, now here, here's, here's what I need for you guys to understand is that God has given you the authority. He says, lo, I give you power. You have the power. You need to hear me say that to you. You have the power to tread on serpents. That serpents just means, just means the, 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 the cunningness of, of evil people, the connivingness of evil people. You have the power to tread over that. Serpents. Watch this. Scorpions has to do with, check this out, backbiters. People that might stab you in, <laughs> that may stab you in the back. He says, he says, you have the power to tread over those spirits. Not only that, hear me purpose, because many of you have an authority that you're not using. You're losing battles that you're not designed to lose. <laughs> Listen, God is so, so strategic. And he gives, you, he gives you two degrees of power. God gives you, watch this, he gives you offensive power. Offensive means that you have the ball. He gives you offensive power. And when he gives you offensive power, he says, he says, you shall tread. That's where you go. You shall tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Not only does he give us offensive power, but God gives us defensive power. Defensive power suggests, he says, that nothing shall by any means hurt you. He gives you offensive defense. Now watch this. Anybody who plays football, anybody who plays any sports, you've probably heard this said, that a good defense makes a good offense. Y'all, this is better than you understand. A good defense makes a good offense. What's the good defense that he gave us? The good defense is nothing's going to hurt you. So if you know that nothing's going to hurt you, you know what? You can enter in the battle. Because he's my rear guard. He's my shield. Nothing's going to hurt me. A good defense makes a good offense. If I know that nothing's going to hurt me, then guess what? I, can, I shall trade. I'll walk. I'll do it because nothing's going to hurt me. It's kind of the blind faith that kids walk in. Kids jump off a bed. They'll jump off a house. Kids are crazy. <laughs> but you know what? They feel like nothing's going to hurt them. It is, it is the same defensive and offensive power that we see with little boy David. When David was going up against Goliath, it's the same thing. David understood his defensive power. David understood that nothing was going to hurt him. He understood that. All these men were afraid to go fight this giant. David was like, man, what are y'all doing? Y'all scared of this cat? David was like, you know, we have defensive power, right? You know that nothing's, nothing's going to harm us. But listen, listen what David says. 
When David goes out to fight Goliath, it was, it was an amazing story. They tried to put the armor on him, and I don't have time to deal with the whole story. But, but when David walks out to deal with Goliath, David says something very, very powerful to this giant. David walks out, and he's looking at this giant. This, this guy's nine feet tall. David looks like a little, little boy, a little ruddy little lad. Looks like a little boy, a little skinny kid. David walks out with a slingshot and five rocks. <laughs> five smooth stones, the Bible calls it. David wasn't afraid of this dude. We had men of war that were afraid of him. Why was David not afraid? Because David understood his defensive and offensive power. David walks out and David says, he says, you come to me with sword and shield. He said, but. <laughs> oh, some of y'all know the story. He said, I come to you in the name. Something about that name, mother. <laughs> Demons tremble at the name. So there's power in the name. <laughs> Jesus says to you, whenever you encounter a demon or a devil, feel free. Use my name. Use my name. Many of you are fighting battles with demonic forces and demons, but you have not operated in authority. Now, you got to know that the authority comes through relationship. You got to have a relationship with God. I need to say this just in case you go out and just try to do stuff and your life's not right. <laughs> I, 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 need to, I, I need to say this because... There were seven boys in the Bible. They called them seven sons of Sceva. They tried to go and do what I'm saying to you this morning without relationship with God. They tried to go exercise a demon, cast a demon out. The Bible says that that one demon whooped all seven of those boys naked, beat all the clothes off of them, and ran them home. So what I'm saying is this. If you're in a good relationship, your life is in good standing with God, then use the name. Use the name. Father, we thank you so much, Lord. Thank you so much for moments like this, God, where we can hear your word and we can, we can hear it, we can understand it. Thank you, God, for allowing it to be delivered with humor and pictures that are painted, Lord God, that God, you God, God, you do this, and you, you build these messages, and God, you, you build them specifically for this particular body. And Father, we thank you for that. Lord God, it's your will that we have complete success in every encounter with the enemy. I pray success over this house, over every person that's here, every person, Lord God, that's watching. Pray, God, that the next encounter will be victorious. I pray, God, that you would help us to, to know that there is power in your name, that when demons hear your name, that they tremble. That's why we shout your name in churches. That's why we say your name in our homes. That's why we sing your name in our cars. God, we, God, we say your name, but God, because there's power in your name. Demons tremble at your name because they remember the wrath that they experience from God. So, Father, thank you that demons are subject to us. But, Father, even more so, we don't rejoice in that. Jesus said, don't rejoice in that, but rejoice that your name is written in heaven. God, that's why we rejoice, because our name is with you. That no matter what happens here, victory or defeat, God, that ultimately, God, someday we're going to be with you. And we thank you for that. So, God, we give you glory and honor. Jesus' name.